Hey there everybody, this is the Race Engineer. Welcome to part 5 and the final video on the series of McPherson suspension design. Today we're going to be designing the damper and the spring assembly. We move on to open the entire sub-assembly. As you can see we have already sub-assembled the spring, the damper strut, the boots and the upper mount, lower seats and the upper seat for the spring. Let's move on to first design the strut itself. You start by making the cylinder of a certain length as per your requirement. Then you move on to place the mounts for which the knuckle arm will be mounted on. Then you add the holes for the bolts that go into the knuckle arm. Just make a few changes like the chamfer or fillets. Then you make a hole inside this entire cylinder where the piston of the strut will move on. The cut revolve section involves entire cavity inside this cylinder like this if i show you the section view it will be a cavity like this in which the piston will move up and down and now you finish the strut then we move on to design the piston which moves inside this cylinder the piston can be of any shape and length whatever meets your requirements and then you insert the piston right here and the entire cylinder that moves up and down with threads on the top where the nut will be fastened inside the hood of your car. The first thing we do is make a cylinder, insert the piston, then insert the tiny shaft on which the nut will be fastened, add another cut extrude on the top, and then finally chamfer the edges. The next part is the lower seating for the spring. As you can see, on this axis is where the strut will go inside, but the seating is flat and perpendicular to the y-axis. We start by making a small cylinder, use a shell or a cut extrude features to make a thinner section. And then you have to insert a revolve feature at an angle. This feature is added in a certain way where this is the axis around which it will be revolved. And this is the thickness of the section. This angle is aligned with the steering axis as I've mentioned in the part one of the McPherson suspension design. To remove and close this top end, you cut this section with the surface and then you and then you combine this object, solid object, with this one using the combined features. To add aesthetic features on the shaft, use the loft feature. This loft feature is designed with two sections. The first section is a circle on this plane. Or the surface and the second one is another circle but on this plane because this is not perpendicular to this once you have the two circles you can add a loft feature and uh, combine these two then you can add a cut revolve section again by removing this material in this direction then you can add a shell feature for this object to remove as much material as you want. From the outside, it looks like a loft, but from the inside, the material has been removed to save weight. The shell feature is applied on this face. To extend this end, we make another boss extrude. And then to remove this extra material protruding out from the lower surface, we just add a cut extrude feature. And then finally, we add some fillets on the corners. This gives us the lower seat for the spring. Next we have the spring itself. The spring is a helix feature with a profile that revolves and circulates. Then from the circular sketch we add a spiral or a helix feature. As you can see the spiral is moving at different pitch, pitch heights. On the top it looks like more compressed and the bottom is less compressed. This is done by adding custom lengths and revolutions to your feature here. The parameters are for 35 millimeters, you add three revolutions and for the further eight millimeters, you add five revolutions on the top. You can also mention your starting angle. By starting angle, it goes up or down. It's totally custom. You can define it whatever way you want. And then to complete the profile, you add a sweep feature. For the sweep, we select the sketch that revolves and the helix along which the path along which this 
sketch will follow and then to make this end flat we add another just a simple planar revolve feature at the bottom because this side is going to sit perpendicular to the lower seat we defined earlier and at the top we make this flat as well simply by cut extruding because this has to be perpendicular to the top seat in reality that in reality they can be left circular because there is a rubber foam before the top seat seat properly without having a perpendicular face and then comes up the upper seat for the spring just like the lower seat it has to be flat on this side at, at an angle that which is the steering axis on the top this axis is where the piston will travel along this path like before just make a boss extrude we add our reference angles this is the steering axis this is perpendicular to this one then we create a hole through which the cylindrical shaft of the piston will move at the top add another section like this one this is first created by adding the cylindrical part at an angle which is the steering axis again and then you chamfer the edges high enough just so that they make a static feature around it then you add another section just like that. and then just like before you shell this face remove all the material from the inside this face was like this and then after the shell it becomes this way. you make a section and cut extrude the additional shaft that was protruding outside and on the top add another chamfer for this edge then add some finish to remove the sharp edges top section of the damper assembly is the upper mount this one is where you see it from the top under the hood and this is where the screws go for this assembly and this is how it is this assembly this strut is fixed to the chassis of the car this one is a very simple feature we start by adding a revolve feature like this we begin with the section with a certain diameter inside and some angles and lengths once we have this revolve feature we make another revolve feature around it because this one is the rubber mounting for flexibility around the upper mount once again this is just a revolve feature around this axis and this is created outside first revolve feature then we add another revolve feature around it for this we get a section like this and it is revolved around this finally on the top we add the holes for the bolts that go to the shell and now you can see more clearly the three different profiles which are created now we move on to create the boot this part is the rubber boot and this is the stopper to avoid the spring from uh, compression too much and from hitting the top of the chassis for the stopper we have a, a sample profile like this one you can choose whatever profile you like just to accommodate your view then we move on to create the boot just like the stopper it is again a revolve feature on the top this boot goes inside this stopper because this is where it is fixed it's mounted along and along then we have the boot section which are repeated profiles you can create just this section and then use the linear sketch pattern to copy this profile along a straight line or the y-axis one small detail that is still missing is the rubber beneath this spring and above the lower seat this one once again it is just a very simple revolve feature you revolve this section around this axis and you make sure that this edge has a distance from this or a radius from this equal to the lower seat where it is going to be assembled and finally on the top you add this small nut this small nut does not have to be designed so you just add it from the solidworks toolbox as you can see here i have the hexagonal flange nut if i right click on this feature and i try to find edit toolbox component i do not see anything it's because the toolbox itself is not enabled you go on on the right and you see this design library and you click it on a toolbox and you click add in now it's already in your c drive 
called uh, solidworks underscore toolbox it will load it in a few seconds once it's loaded you can choose from the different standards you can select bearings bolts screws nuts and inside the nuts i have the hexagonal nut and whatever i want it so if i go back and select right click and then i add a toolbox components i can see and change the design the size m6 m5 bolts of uh, this nut here one last component you don't see is the real bearing it is also copied from the toolbox if you right click this now you can see edit toolbox components you can select the size and once you select the size you you can see the bore the outer diameter and the thickness of this bearing and the number of balls of this uh, real bearing the display says that if you make it simplified you do not see individual balls and you see a uh, revolve feature but if you click on detailed you can see all the individual balls of this ball bearing if you first make a section view and then you go and see on the top you can see this bearing inside this whole section this is the rubber uh, flexible mounting of the upper seat which will go to be connected with the chassis and if i click now again on the rail bearing and edit this component i can change my values and you can see how this thickness and the outer diameter of this ball bearing will change if i select a different value this is the height and now it is not aligned with our design so we choose the original values that we have fixed 10 10 and then we can see the ball bearing this is the nut which is on top of it and the size of the nut should be as much as to cover this shaft and the inner race of the bearing otherwise it is not fixed so this is all for the entire damper and the spring assembly as you can see this piston moves up and down inside this this is the spring which compresses and decompresses and this is the top mount which goes towards the chassis and this is the nut which fixes all this damper assembly to the chassis so this marks the end of the entire mcfrancis suspension design video series as you can see we have designed all the damper assembly the tire the knuckle arm the lower arm the ball joints and uh, tie rod and the cv joint and the shafts all of them come together now and uh, of course i didn't show you how to make these nuts but you can use the toolbox feature and add as you like this complete uh, system is available on my GrabCAD uh, profile. You can check it out. It's in the description below. If you want to see more videos like this, so please subscribe to my channel and uh, comment in the comment section. And I'll get back to you with more entertaining videos. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.